What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch back here with another NFL video. In this video, I'm going to give you my reasons why the New England Patriots will win Super Bowl 53 over the LA Rams. Before I get into it, make sure you gronk spike that like button, subscribe to the channel for NFL content just like this, and comment below your opinion. Do you think the Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl, or do you think the Rams are going to take it? And give me your in-depth reasons why. I'd like to hear from you guys. All right, but this is my opinion, and I've been over the game plans of both teams. I've been over what the Rams are going to do, what the Patriots are going to do, and I truly feel like the Patriots are going to come out on top in this game. And I wanted to give you my in-depth reasoning for why that's going to happen. So I'm going to break it down through the offense and the defense and give you strict reasons why the Patriots will be successful in this game and ultimately win the game. So let's start off with the offensive side of the football. First off, it all starts up front for the Patriots. It all starts with protecting Tom Brady and running the football. This is two things that they've been very efficient at over the course of the playoffs and late in the season. The offensive line only allowed one hit on Tom Brady all playoffs long coming into this Super Bowl. He's only been sacked two times all season from the interior. So the guards, the centers, they've only given up two sacks all season long. That was in the first game of the season against the Houston Texans. Since then, no sacks from the interior of the offensive line. So that's key. Why is that key? Because the Rams have Aaron Donald, they have Nadama Kansu. Even though Sue plays a little bit of defensive end, Aaron Donald plays a little bit of defensive end at times on third down to get a better pass rush against weaker players per se. A lot of it comes from the interior defensive line, the pressure of Sue and Donald and that combination. The Patriots are going to be stressed up in that interior offensive line and because they've been so great in that area David Andrews Shaq Mason Joe Tooney I think they will be able to pull it off double team Donald take out Sue and protect Tom Brady another reason why the offensive line is going to be really big their running game their running game has been fantastic Sony Michelle leads the playoffs in rushing yards James White has had some key third down conversions, specifically against the Kansas City Chiefs. And Rex Burkhead scored two touchdowns against the Chiefs. So these running backs have been ultra efficient, but a lot of it has been because of the push of the offensive line opening up these holes. The Rams have not been very good at defending the run period. Like they give up 5.1 yards per carry during the regular season. I understand they've been better in that area during the playoffs when they played the Cowboys, they played the Saints. But let's be honest, the Cowboys first off aren't a team that necessarily scare you with their passing game. So you're going to be loading up to stop the run. To me, it's more of a pick your poison matchup with the Patriots if you try and stop the run you're susceptible to play action you're susceptible to the pass because they do have Tom Brady and they do have some nice passing weapons that they can open up and if you look at the Saints they're not quite as play action heavy as the Patriots and make you think a little bit more in terms of the the running game and the way that they run is a little bit different I also think the way that the Patriots offensive line is playing right now is, is far superior to what the Saints Saints have been doing over the past half course of the season. I mean, the Saints offensive line is fantastic, very talented, but they've been they were really beat up in that game. They're very injured and they're just not playing at the peak level that the Patriots have been playing. And then you also throw in the fact that the Patriots have a Rob Gronkowski, they have a James Devlin, they have a Dwayne Allen. These guys at the tight end and fullback position are excellent run blockers and opening up lanes and and Outside runs, inside runs, doesn't really matter. They have so many different ways they can attack you. And with another week to prepare, that gives Josh McDaniels, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and Dante Scarnecchia extra time to find these runs and find that scheme that they want to be efficient in. So the offensive line is going to be the number one thing, the run game, the pass game. They are going to open up the offense. Now, a couple of times you will see when Bill Belichick has a press conference over the course of a season, being a Patriots fan, I've kind of picked up that there's certain times he'll let things slip. 
Like last week, he he basically said the game plan for the Patriots early in the game was to jump out to a lead. That was essential for them to win the game. What happened? The Patriots received the football. They went down the field. They scored. Started off hot. Took the crowd out of it early in that game because Kansas City was the best first quarter team in football. This week, he talked about Wade Phillips' defense. He talked about how it's been a scheme that hasn't really evolved over time. It's been pretty much the same. And he talked about how the Rams have been mostly a zone defense. Now, that to me was a slip-up because that to me is triggering in my mind that the Patriots are very prepared for this defensive scheme. They're also very prepared for the zone defenses. And when you say zone defense and Tom Brady in the same sentence, I'm happy as a Patriots fan and you should be too because the Patriots and Tom Brady know how to take advantage of some of the best zone defenses that they have in the past. They will in this game. If the Rams are resorting to heavy zone concepts, the Patriots will pick it apart and Tom Brady will pick it apart. So that is something to look forward to if you're a Patriots fan is potentially the Rams have to go to zone because they're not a really good man coverage team. Julian Edelman, I know this is a point to itself, but he is clutch. He is basically, in, in the two Super Bowls they've played, he's made the biggest plays in the game. He made that ridiculous catch against the Atlanta Falcons. He made that unbelievable play against Cam Chancellor after he got absolutely popped and then continued to run for a first down, which was the game-changing, game-flipping play. And then he also got the game uh, scoring, the game-winning touchdown, I should say, against the Seattle Seahawks. So Julian Edelman is a clutch player. We all know he's an amazing playoff player. He's the second most receptions in playoff history. He's soon to have the second most yards in playoff history. He's a fantastic clutch player, but he's also incredible in Super Bowls. And last year they didn't have him in this game, so he's going to be nice to have against the Rams. James White and Rob Gronkowski. Okay, two reasons, two different reasons. Rob Gronkowski, just like Edelman, fantastic in Super Bowls, okay? He's played in th three of them? Three of them. It's because he played in the, the Giants game, he missed the Atlanta game, he played in the Seahawks game, and he played in the Eagles game. All of those games, outside of the Giants game where he was injured, he had a broken ankle, he played amazing in the Eagles game last year. He had two touchdowns over 100 yards. He played great against the Seahawks, had a touchdown in that game, had a few big catches. This year, he's playing against a Rams defense who doesn't defend tight ends. They're not good at it. They've allowed the second most receiving yards to the position. Rob Gronkowski, you see this week, I'm very confident in how he's going to play in this game because of his attitude, because of his joy. Um, you see, usually when Rob Gronkowski doesn't play well, he's uptight, he's kind of not feeling himself, he's not cracking jokes, he's not having fun. When Gronk's at his best, he's having fun, he's dancing, he's doing things, and this Super Bowl, man, it, I don't care if he retires after the game, it just seems like he's having a great time, and when Rob Gronkowski's having a great time, that means he's going to have a great game. And when he's facing this team who doesn't really have an answer for a tight end, I think Gronk's going to have a massive game. James White, okay, the Rams struggled against Alvin Kamara, they allowed a ton of catches to him last week. I think it was 11 in total. And they don't really have anybody to match James White in coverage at all. You know, if they're playing zone, the Patriots are going to figure out a way to match him up with a linebacker in that zone and, and pick him apart. And he just knows how to read Tom Brady. They have such great chemistry. And then if it's man, I mean, good night. It, whether it's in the backfield, whether it's out wide in a five wide set, James White's going to just torch these guys. So... Overall, James White, Ju uh, Julian Edelman, and Rob Gronkowski. The middle of the field for the passing game is going to be the key to success for this passing game. And I think these three guys are going to have massive games and massive impacts. The other one I've kind of hinted to it is play action. The, the Rams actually ranked pretty poorly against play action this season. They ranked dead last in both passer rating and QBR and allowed play action dropbacks this season just to be super successful opposing quarterbacks went 91 for 121 for 1100 yards and 14 touchdowns only four picks on play action tom brady's probably the best play action quarterback in the nfl and the patriots are a fantastic play action team so look out for play action to be a huge aspect of this game plan and that's another reason why the patriots are going to be successful in this game they love play action they love to run the ball and set up the play action and 
Think back to last year. They played a very similar defense in the fact that their strength was up front. What did they do? They went to a lot of play action, and that was very successful against the Eagles. Different defenses, but similar makeup. So look for that to be successful, the play action game. James Devlin. Now, I brought up how impactful he's going to be in the running game, but in the passing game, James Devlin is going to be equally important. Now, you're saying, what do you mean by that? Is he going to block? No, what I mean by that is, first off, the Rams are not a very good team in certain personnel packages. When they're in 21 personnel, the, the opposing offense, they have allowed a lot of yards. They are not very good against that set. And what that means is they're going to have two running backs, two receivers, and a tight end, 20, 21 personnel. So the Rams, they give up 5.1 yards per carry during the regular season. They've allowed 122.3 yards per game on the ground. And when the team is in 21 personnel, they've allowed 4.5 yards per carry. They've allowed 9.5 yards per pass attempt. So that being said, you're going to see a lot of Devlin in this game, but it's not just going to be traditional eye formation. You're also going to see him out wide and five wide or out wide and four wide. You know what I mean? So the reason that is, is because James Devlin is going to be a coverage indicator. If James Devlin is out wide matched up as a receiver, you're going to know for Tom Brady's sake if it's going to be man or zone coverage. Just think about it. If Akib Tlaib is lined up on James Devlin, it's obviously zone coverage. If a linebacker is matched up out wide with James Devlin, it's going to be man coverage. So you know by putting James Devlin out there, even though he's not a threat in the passing game, okay, Tom Brady can check into the right play, use the right adjustments, and get into the matchup that he wants to go to, whether that's hitting James White, Edelman, Gronk, or Hogan, or whoever it may be. That is going to be the adjustment with James Devlin from going from the I formation in 21 per, or to personnel to going to out, you know, uh, J James White and James Devlin out wide with Gronk, Hogan, and Edelman in the slot so look out for that package to be very successful and something that they use early to indicate defenses and the last reason offensively is Tom Brady he is the baddest man on the planet he said it himself and in the clutch if it comes down to it you know Tom Brady's going to make the play you just know he's going to take that final drive down for the score and if you're the Rams you don't know if Jared Goff's going to be able to do the same that's why you should have confidence in the Patriots in that situation if it's a close game count on the Patriots to come out on top defensively okay the Patriots have already played the best offense in the NFL and fared fairly well fared pretty well compared to a lot of other teams in the league. They shut them out in the first half, and this was in their building. This was in Arrowhead in a tough atmosphere against an awesome offense at peak power. So they already beat the Chiefs. They already slowed down the Chiefs. They already got a ton of pressure on Mahomes, played very competitive in coverage, and now they're playing an offense, which is good, a little bit different, but not nearly as explosive the Chiefs are an explosive offense if you really watched that game against the Chiefs the Patriots defense was all over them but if it weren't for a few plays the Chiefs really had down the field which is what the Chiefs do to you the Rams aren't a team that are gonna make huge chunk plays like Patrick Mahomes Tyree Kill Sammy Watkins and Travis Kelsey they just don't have that type of personnel if the Patriots play the same way they did against the Chiefs the Rams won't have the answers that the Chiefs did Okay, over the last six games, the Patriots front has been incredible at forcing pressure. Why this is so key is because Jared Goff is not good under pressure. He's not a very good quarterback when he's rushed. Now, a lot of people will say, well, nobody is. Well, Jared Goff's among one of the worst quarterbacks when under pressure. And the Patriots, over the last six games, led the NFL in pressure on 36% of dropbacks. That includes a great game against the Chiefs, against the Chargers, and now in the Super Bowl against the Rams. The Patriots have also sent a number 
number of zero blitz is so no safety coverage over top man to man straight across the board and sending people at the quarterback and just doing an incredible job of disguising their defense which might throw Jared Goff off make him nervous and force him into turnovers I think you should be confident that the Patriots defense this year is a lot more aggressive and effective in that aggression than Matt Patricia's defense was last year now, speaking of Matt Patricia, Bill Belichick, I think, will learn from Matt Patricia in this game because Matt Patricia was one of the best this season with the Lions at slowing down the Rams' offense. He did a great job of scheming up a defense that really took away the play action and outside zone runs for the LA Rams. Bill Belichick will do the very same. He just has better personnel, and that's what he can learn from Matt Patricia there. The Rams are not a multiple offense. They're an offense that really plays in two personnel sets, whether that's two tight ends or three receivers. That's all they basically do, and a majority of the time it's three receivers. When you're dealing with a team that's not very multiple and you're playing Bill Belichick, it's not really good news. That's another reason to be confident. Now, another reason to be skeptical is Todd Gurley. I think Todd Gurley, if he plays in this game, he's 100% healthy. He's going to have a big impact, but... If he's not 100% healthy, all of a sudden I think the Rams' chances of winning this game decrease by a ton. If C.J. Anderson is the is the number one back in this game for the Rams, I don't think they're going to win. Because if, if C.J. Anderson is the guy, he has no threat of a receiving running back. If the Patriots have to pay attention to Todd Gurley as a receiver, that at least makes them a little bit more unpredictable and makes them a little bit more savvy in what they can do on offense in terms of matching up Gurley as a receiver on certain players in the Patriots defense if you're CJ Anderson they can just sub in another linebacker to help out against the run and not worry about him in the passing game another thing is the Patriots secondary all Patriots fans should feel extremely confident in their secondary. I think it's one of the best they've had over the past 20 years, to be quite honest with you. It's probably the best one they've had since the early 2000s. Um, they can play physical man-to-man -man coverage. They can take players out of the game. Stephon Gilmore is a first-team All-Pro. J.C. Jackson allowed the lowest passer rating in the NFL. Jason McCourty was a top 12 guy in PFF grade. They have a lot of great uh, corners, great safeties as well. And they have a versatile secondary that can cover a lot of different type of receivers and they can do whatever you want. When talking about what the Patriots do in their secondary, it's play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage as I brought up. What the Rams are not good at is playing against is man coverage. Brandon Cook's catch rate against man press was 52%. Against zone, it was 78%. We know as Patriots fans that Brandon Cook struggled at times with man press last year against certain teams like the Dolphins and Xavier and Howard, for example. Robert Woods' catch rate against man press was 53%, 1% higher than Brandon Cook's, and 74% against zone, slightly lower than Brandon Cook's. The Patriots run the highest percentage of man coverage, meaning that this will be very competitive and won't... Thinking about it, Jared Goff's top two targets only catch the ball on about 50% of the time that they're thrown to in man coverage. So whether that's Jared Goff throwing poor passes or these guys simply not getting as open as they do against zone, that's something to pay attention to and to feel good about if you're a Patriots fan. The last two points I want to make, one is a little small. Dante Hightower is back for this Super Bowl. I know that doesn't seem like a huge thing considering he's not the player he used to be, but if you think back to the Patriots' most recent Super Bowl wins, he's been the biggest playmaker on the defensive side the ball he has this clutch gene in the Super Bowl where he just makes plays whether it's the one-handed tackle against Marshawn Lynch to bring him down at the one yard line or the strip sack against Matt Ryan he has been a unsung hero for this team in big playoff games so look out for him to have another impact in this game and another thing is experience the Patriots have 38 players who have played in the Super Bowl they know what it's like the Rams have four so that's a huge deal at least early in this game to get their footing and being comfortable comfortable and knowing the way and the trend of the game so that is my reasoning for why the Patriots are going to win this game and why I feel confident why they will win this game I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button subscribe to the channel for more NFL it's Mitch of the bottom line view thanks for tuning in peace out